Hello beloved, hello friends. Uh, I just wanted to go over another topic that we have here today called uh, the unclean Miss Spirit, the unclean living Miss Spirit. Uh, but before we jump into it, let's first start it off with prayer. Dear Lord, I come to you right now asking you to forgive, it, forgive me for my sins and I pray, Father, that you may forgive others for, they, for their sins, knowing that your son died on the cross for all of us that have repent, turn away from our, way, our ways and subject ourselves to you, we know that you'll be merciful on us to forgive us. And Lord, I pray to you right now, asking that you may use me to be able to speak to the masses, use me to be able to speak to others, so that we might not be ignorant of Satan's devices, that, but that we may know the truth, Lord, because I'm speaking your words, not mine. Using your word that became flesh, using your word that was and with, was with God and always was with him. Your consistent truth that pierces the hardest heart, Lord, and I pray that the words that uh, which I use that come from your Bible, I pray that it moves anyone who seeks to learn the truth, because, Father, you are the embodiment of truth. As your son said, he is the way, the truth, and life, and no one goes to the Father, but through him, Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I thank you for all that you've revealed to me, because, Lord, I don't know anything other than what you show me. I simply trust and believe your word, where you stay to get wisdom, but in all my getting, get understanding. And lean not on my own understanding, but in all my ways acknowledge you, and you will direct my path. So I simply try to follow that to the best I can. I'm not perfect, Father, but I love you perfectly. And I know, Lord, that you love me perfectly. And I know, Father, that you will be able to help free those who are battling confusion, battling uh, bondage inside of the, the market of sin. And I know, Father, that what I say through these Bible studies will be able to break those bondages, break those chains that they may be subject to. Now, since they know the truth, and the truth shall set them free, because your Son's name, Jesus the Christ, is above any name and more powerful than anyone, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And as he has said, once we accept him, he accepts us. And all power and all glory has been given to him, and he gives it to those who are his. And as the Lord said, with that power we trample over serpents and, skate, serpents and snakes. And nothing, made, no weapon formed by the enemy will be able to prosper. Because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. So I said, Lord, I pray this prayer to you. I love you very much with all my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so what we're going to cover today is this creature known as the mist. The, the mist spirit, this living mist. It's sometimes described as a fog, sometimes described as a mist, sometimes described, described as a smoke. But one thing that is always apparent in its description is that it's alive. It has a purpose when it's seen, and it, it makes its presence known. Um, in these two sh pictures right here, what you're actually seeing is this creature, uh, because one thing I've noticed in my study with this uh, in capturing or, or seeing or observing this creature is that it has a face. That's one thing about it. Though its body can take shape or take any shape it wants to take, what seems to be apparent is its face all the time. Uh, and here in this photo on the right, what you see is this jawline here of, the, of this creature followed by the nose the dark part of its eye, its forehead, going back to the back of its head. So you see that this is one creature right here. And you see that there's another identified by its eyes. And this is one thing I've, I've seen to always notice, is that it has a, its eyes are similar to the, the eye sockets of a skull. That's one thing I noticed, is that the eyes are similar to the eye sockets of a skull. Deep, deep, deep black eyes. Around this, around this eye socket, or the outer part of the eye socket, deep cheek indention. That's one thing I've seen to always find when I come across these uh, creatures. And here's another one as well. It's moving in this direction, and you can see its mouth is dropped. You see its chin line again, and you see one, 
to the deepness of his eyes right here and uh, this being his full head so this is one right you see here and this is one that you see here and this is one that you see here so this is uh, what we're going to discuss tonight or today uh, this living mist, this unclean mist spirit now first I want to discuss this in the scriptures it states that in Acts now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee and thou shalt be blind now seeing the sun for a season and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness and it went about seeing some to lead him to the, by the hand so it shows here in the scriptures that when the Lord fell upon Paul or fell upon this individual I can't remember who it was exactly but he became blind and we see that what fell on him was a mist and a darkness but we're going to hone in on this mist now you want to ask yourself or what's always asked and what I'm going to always repeat in these Bible studies is what is it that they want what is it that their purpose what is it that they are what's their agenda and Jesus makes it clear that the mist creature as with all unclean spirits and creatures their purpose and agenda is to bring others like them to where they dwell so they're like conduits they're just brokers if you will and this is referenced in Matthew 12 when Jesus says when an unclean spirit goes out of a man he goes through dry places so he can rest to find none then he says I will return to my house from which I came and when he comes he sees it he finds it empty swept and put in order then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first, so shall it be in this wicked generation. So Jesus is explaining the agenda of these spirits because here he's saying that the spirit didn't, was not cast out, but the spirit says, I'm going to go out of a man, and when he goes, excuse me, and when he goes seeking. Uh, to find rest and finds none, he goes back. So we see here that a spirit can leave out of his dwelling place voluntarily, in addition to being cast out by the name of Jesus and the power of God. But we see that why do they leave voluntarily? Because they serve their masters that are more greater than itself, uh, in which it transforms the state or place where those those spirits, those unclean spirits, dwell. Uh, in a much worse state than it was in the beginning. So as Ephesians explains that there is a chain of command with uh, we don't fight against principality, I mean we don't fight against flesh and blood against principalities, powers, rulers, the darkness of the age, wickedness in heavenly places. And we don't fight against flesh and blood but there's a hierarchy of spirits that other spirits are subject to. In other words they have masters. And they have masters and this is corroborated when when we see in the scripture here that a spirit will leave, come back, only to bring more spirits wicked than itself. And it, it will be either uh, a man or go through uh, other places to find some type of place where it could be, uh, where it could be, be like God. That's their agenda too, is to, to be like God. Because as the Holy Spirit of God dwells in us, they also want to mimic that being like the Holy Spirit just as Satan wants to be like God, mimicking God in every which way he possibly can. Um, so this right here again explains the mist and explains what they can do voluntarily go or stay in which they serve other spirits more worse than themselves. But again we're going to hone in on the mist but I want you to first understand their agenda which is again they have masters they want to serve, they want to be like God and that they are called the mist. But to first really understand the mist I want you to understand uh, how the scripture says um, we can understand God's attributes, but we can understand God's invisible attributes by understanding His visible creation. Now, look at this shark right here. This shark is a enormous predator. It's a huge, huge fish with uh, an immense power. But notice the fish surrounding it. The fish surrounding it accompanies this large beast uh, known as pilot fish. So the sharks don't eat the pilot fish, but the pilot fish accompanies the shark. And I'm sure uh, the pilot fish eats off of what the shark uh, leaves behind as crumbs, so to speak, from whatever it devours. So I want you to kind of comprehend how in God's creation we see a sub-creation following a more predatorial creation uh, 
akin to what they are. So we see these lower level fish uh, following a more dominant, uh, dominant fish than itself. And now take this again. You here you see this rhino, and what you tend to always find with rhinos is these minor birds. Uh, these minor birds uh, always accompany these rhinos, or any other type of birds may accompany rhinos. But I, what I'm trying to get you to understand is the concept between uh, the concept of how these animals are in terms of how other creatures will dwell with them. Uh, uh, like we sing with the shark and the pile of fish, as we see with the minor birds and the rhino, and as we're going to learn with the uh, mist spirits. What it seems to be apparent from my research and understanding is that the mist spirit seems to be the more predatorial creation or the most or, or more predatorial spirit, one of those seven wicked spirits, more worse than itself, that other spirits follow. So where this mist spirit is, you will find other spirits or other other spirits lower than itself there. So in other words, we start to study off with orbs, and what orbs seem, tend to do is make the place more uh, comfortable to bring in the mist. And the mist is always accompanied with other spirits that we're going to go more into. But right now, I just want to understand. I want you to get to get you to understand that orbs and mist are always together from everything I've seen. They're never isolated. They're never by themselves. And, but there is always another spirit associated with these myths. These myths are a high level predatorial creation compared to the rhino, compared to the shark, where other creations accompany it like these birds to the rhino and like the pilot fish to the shark. There are other spirits that accompany the uh, myth spirit. So now let's uh, begin a study with uh, the unclean myth spirit and uh, testimonies and we'll go from there. I've had more than one experience before. I'm going to tell you about this particular one today. It was scary, yet really made me a believer. As I mentioned before, the spirits want to be like God, in which God wants us to believe in Him, and so do unclean spirits. But see, God says through His Son, blessed are those who believe who don't see because faith only comes without sight. It's because we don't believe, we don't have faith through sight. You see, we, we walk through faith from what we believe as a choice. But see, these unclean spirits like to, dwell, like to uh, get people to believe in them through sight. And that's totally contradictory to the Word of God because, again, to, to believe in the Lord requires us to believe in Him through faith alone. And through our faith, uh, we are then made righteous through Him, for His righteousness is poured on us. But I'm not going to start preaching here for a second. Uh, so let's, again, I just want you to first see how unclean spirits operate, and that is to be like God, in which they can show, appear, or manifest themselves to get a person to believe in them, because they want to be like God. Like 
Like two o'clock in the morning. From our way, our way and subject ourselves to you, we know that you'll be merciful in us to forgive us. And Lord, I pray to you right now, asking that you may use me to be able to speak to the masses, use me to be able to speak to others, so that we might not be ignorant of Satan's devices, that, but that we may know the truth, Lord, because I'm speaking your words, not mine. Using your word that became flesh, using your word that was and with, was with God and always was with him. Your consistent truth that pierces the heart. Hello, beloved. Hello, friends. Uh, I just wanted to go over another topic that we have here today called uh, the unclean misspirit. This unclean living misspirit. Uh, but before we jump into it, let's first start it off with prayer. Dear Lord, I come to you right now asking you to forgive, forgive me for my sins. And I pray, Father, that you may forgive others for, they, for their sins. Knowing that your son died on the cross for all of us that have repent, turn away. Heart is heart, Lord. And I pray that the words that of which I use that come from your Bible, I pray that it moves anyone who seeks to learn the truth. Because, Father, you are the embodiment of truth. As your son said, he is the way, the truth, and life. And no one goes to the Father, but through him, Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I thank you for all that you've revealed to me, because, Lord, I don't know anything other than what you show me. I simply trust and believe your word, where you stay to get wisdom, but in all my getting, get understanding. And lean not on my own understanding, but in all my ways, acknowledge you, and you will direct my path. So I simply try to follow that to the best I can. I'm not perfect, Father, but I love you perfectly. And I know, Lord, that you love me perfectly. And I know, Father, that you'll be able to help free those who are battling confusion, battling uh, bondage inside of the, the market of sin. And I know, Father, that what I say through these Bible studies will be able to break those bondages, break those chains that they may be subject to. Now, since they know the truth, and the truth shall set them free, because your son's name, Jesus the Christ, is above any name, and more powerful than anyone, because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And as he has said, once we accept him, he accepts us, and all power and all glory has been given to him, and he gives it to those who are his. And as the Lord said, with that power we trample over serpents and snakes, 